My name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director of Fano Goldman and Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan. And today we're continuing our video series designed to educate and inform the public, so please subscribe to our channel. I want to talk today about five of the frequent questions that we are asked concerning custody. You know, we get these questions all the time from our viewing audience. Sometimes these questions come up from would-be clients. Sometimes they are sent to us by email. What are the questions that were dealt with? Well, question number one, a lot of people want to know this from the male side of our viewing audience. If I'm a guy, does that mean I'm necessarily not going to get custody? This is a, an interesting question because it sort of plays upon the history of how custody used to very much favor the female. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, forget it. It was really a pervasive problem. I will tell you, though, nowadays, it does not. Nowadays, the court looks at the best interest of the children. That may result in, in a particular case of the court ordering the custody to the mom instead of the dad or whatever, but it won't be because they're the mom or the dad. It'll be because it's in the best interest of the child. But that is a question we are frequently asked. If I'm the guy, does that mean I'm necessarily going to lose it? Another question we're going to ask, and we get this question asked by males and females, if I have a criminal record, does that mean I'm automatically going to lose custody? That's a very good question. Because, you know, in taking into account the best interests of the child, one of those factors that the court analyzes, there's a dozen of them, one of them is the moral fitness of the parties. So if you have somebody who's got a criminal record, does that go to the moral fitness of the parties? Might they lose custody because of a criminal conviction? I will tell you this, generally speaking, especially if it's something in the past, the court is not going to care. And the court is not going to feel that it is necessarily relevant in time to its custody decision. But ongoing criminal activity, consorting with known felons, criminal activity that's not a conviction but is an activity nonetheless, like a use of drugs, addiction to cocaine, guns, theft, fraud, these kind of things is certainly something the court could look into. So it's not so much about having a criminal record, but if you've got a life of crime, you can well expect that the court is going to steer clear of you in uh, custody, all things being equal, the other person is likely to get it. So that is certainly something you've got to consider. Another thing we're frequently asked is, what if I'm out of town? Will I necessarily lose custody if my job transfers me to Florida? Now I'm in Florida, mom and the baby are here, or dad and the baby are here. Does that mean that the out-of-towner is necessarily going to lose custody? Well, the answer is like this. Um, the court is going to give a custody order that is reflective of the reality. In other words, if the child is here and both parties are similarly situated, that is, they're both deserving parents, but the child is here, the court is likely going to give the custody to the parent that's here. So if you, in the middle, all of a sudden pick up and move out of town, are you going to get custody? No. Why? Because as a matter of practical reality, you don't have custody, so you won't get it. Can you strip the other parent of custody and have the child move out of town with you? It is possible. Uh, stranger things have happened. The court does have the authority to uh, make a change like that, but it won't do so unless there's some compelling reason. So you've got to realize that that is something that uh, is, is possible, but the likelihood is limited. So it's not that the court will necessarily hold it against you that you're out of town, but again, looking at what's in the best interest of the child, at that point you're asking the court to make an analysis. Is it in the best interest of the child to uproot the child and move the child away because you took a job elsewhere? And expect that the court's going to have a very difficult time uh, agreeing with you on that without some, some compelling evidence. Another thing we are often asked is, what if I uh, have a small family or no family here in Michigan, but my ex has this huge family with parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins, am I likely to lose custody because of that? And I will tell you, no, you're not likely to lose custody because of that. They won't necessarily have an advantage because they have a larger family. They won't have an advantage for that because a larger family doesn't mean a better family. This, uh, this analysis is between father and mother. That's what the court is going to look at. It's great if there's a large family and if mom gets custody but dad has a big family, I'm sure when dad has the opportunity to be with the child, all the family will be involved and that's going to be great. But no, you won't necessarily lose uh, custody because the other side has a larger family. Nor will you, number five, nor will you, number uh, five being the fifth most asked question, would you lose it because you don't have money and the other side does? 
a lot of times people say, does it mean I'm going to lose money because my husband has resources and I lack them? My husband's from a rich family. My wife's from a rich family and I'm just a factory worker. What will happen? Those are not reasons for you to lose custody. You won't not get a fair shake of custody because the other side has more money. You will, however, uh, have to answer some very difficult questions if your lack of money is causing an instability and impacting the child. So for example, if because you lack money you have no home, the court's not going to give custody to a parent that has no home as opposed to one that does. So if your lack of job means that you can't afford food and shelter for your child, expect that the court's going to have to get to the bottom of that and the court may well feel it's in the best interest of the child to have those things. That uh, having been said, though, sometimes we have a situation where both parents lack resources. Then the court is really in a quandary. Those factors are equal, so then the court decides it based on other factors. If you have any questions about your particular case, though, of course, every case is different. Reach out, and we'll be glad to help you out.